Hey guys, welcome to the Living Free in Tennessee podcast, and no, I am not Nicole. Why? The C virus has come to the holler. I just got to where I'm on the uptick from that, and Nicole is just getting on to the downtick from that, so it kind of panned out timing-wise, just in the fact that we're not both sick at the same time. So anyway, what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about some of the lessons I learned from the military and applying them to a homestead, particularly leveling up to the next level, like getting promoted, but I'm going to apply it more to the homestead kind of thing. So more of physical stuff, not like getting promoted. Uniformity and redundancy. But before I get into all that, a couple of quick announcements. Apparently there is a new podcast that I was just informed about called the Fireside Freedom Conversation. And apparently they are streaming live Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. Um, I guess you can play time zone roulette to figure out which time zone that is. But apparently it's Amy Dingman from A Farmer's Kind of Life, Tim the Toolman Cook up in Canada, and like two or three other people. I haven't actually found their actual website if they have one or anything like that. So anyway, you should probably check that out. I'm going to be checking that out. Then, of course, event-wise coming up, we've got the Self-Reliance Weekend, which is going to be a two-day event in Camden, Tennessee. If you have not gotten tickets for that, you should come. Also, the Spring Workshop here at The Holler in April. And if you've never been to one of those events, I would encourage you to go to either one. I mean, they both have their advantages. The Spring Workshop is a smaller group of people for a longer period of time, whereas, you know, Self-Reliance Weekend is going to be a larger group of people for a shorter period of time. But both of those events, it's a really good opportunity to have a lot of different conversations, not just with, you know, your celebrity people like, you know, Dr. Ken Berry and Nicole and John Willis, but, you know, the other people that are like you that are also doing the same things that you're doing and you get to sit there and talk to them and you'll have conversations about, oh yeah, I had this problem or I have this problem or I did this or whatever and people will come back and they'll tell you what they did about the same situation because they found themselves in the same boat. And you get to make a lot of friends through events like that. Most of the people that I am really good friends with now I met by going to events like that. So I would really encourage you to check both of those out. You can find both of them on Nicole's website at lovingfreeintennessee.com but anyway um, I have my handy dandy notes on a whiteboard written in big letters so that I can see uh, workshop tickets okay yeah so um, tales from the prepper pantry yeah yes all of them all of the preps from the prepper pantry because we're using them all right now because we haven't gone anywhere we have gone nowhere i have not left the house in like two and a half weeks so yeah we've been pulling a lot from the prepper pantry we did manage to add to the prepper pantry i think nicole mentioned that on her last podcast is that the opportunity came up to get another half of a cow Obviously, we have not been able to leave to go get that, but what we were able to do was work out a deal with somebody who lives in that area to pick it up, and then they were coming down here to do some work, so they just, I think their wife picked it up, brought it back to their house, threw it outside, because it was going to be like 20 degrees that night there, and 
then the next day he brought it down and we threw it in one of the freezers we have here so now we have that added to the prepper pantry but we've been i've been burning through a lot of broth i've been trying not to drink a whole lot of coffee i'm kind of splurging today but um yeah i've been drinking a lot of water and a lot of broth and then going through a lot of beef because apparently beef was recommended for i don't know exactly why it was recommended but apparently it's better for you when you're sick like this according to people like neethi bali and i don't know who else nicole talked to i'm just relaying what i happen to remember from when i was like in agonizing pain because i had really really bad muscle aches so anyway that's kind of what we're doing with the prepper pantry right now. Um, we've got a bunch of other big projects going on. So, you know, the Taj Mahal is going up right now. She's almost ready to get her roasting shack onto the new power. So it will be on its own power meter and not be, you know, causing my grow lights to flicker that are over there for my indoor aquaponics system which that's another thing if you're watching the um video version of this you'll notice that i'm not in the coal studio i am in the holler homestead operations center aka my living room so anyway getting into applying lessons that i learned from the military i'm not a huge fan of the way that the military does a lot of things in fact you can kind of look at that and be like, this is exactly why the government shouldn't be allowed to do anything. But there are some things that the military has figured out and does fairly well. And one thing that, you know, I constantly got told when I was in the military is always being ready for the next rank, the rank above you, being able to do the next job, the next higher ranks job. And kind of applying that to the homestead, you know, it's not necessarily being able to be like, you know, I'm not going to try to be Sanderson Farms or something like that, but looking at climate zones. So we, you, or at least since I've lived here, we usually don't get a lot of consecutive days where we're below freezing. If we do, it's for like a week at a time. Maybe. But the last couple of weeks, I mean, we've been pretty much below freezing pretty constant. Pretty much every night. And then daytime temps, we'll get a couple of days where we'll get up to like, you know, 28, 30, 31 degrees. But we don't actually breach freezing we don't get above freezing or if we do get above freezing you know we'll get a couple of days where we'll get up to like 35 for like two whole hours and then we're right back below freezing so everything is frozen like everything i want to stick a piece of rebar in the ground just because it was laying there so i picked it up and went to stick it in the ground and i thought there was a board or something under the grass at first and i realized oh no it's just the ground's frozen yeah no big deal but you know i bring that part up to say that you know act like you're further north than you are when it comes to freezing temperatures because if you're ready to have that consistent below freezing temp when it actually happens it's not that big of a deal so right now for the goat pasture normally with them for their water i'll just you know when i'm walking up there they got a bathtub i'll grab you know a stick or a shovel or a t-post or just whatever i happen to walk by on my way up there and see and be like oh yeah that'll work i'll grab it walk up to the bathtub and smash the ice in 
and they'll be good for, you know, till the next day. But right now, that's not working. What I need to do is I need to get out there and run an extension cord. Well, I'm going to get out there and run an extension cord out to a stock tank heater. But the problem with doing that is they're goats and they're going to try to eat the extension cord. So my plan to make it so that we are kind of prepared for the next climate zone up so that we can deal with this a lot easier is I'm going to be running a electric wire out there and running conduit into the bathtub so that there's nothing well I guess they could try to eat the conduit but there's not really anything for them to eat I'd rather them eat you know a one or two dollar conduit fitting as opposed to you know my $55 really really nice extension cord so that's one aspect of it and then another aspect of it is kind of if you've got you know just say five laying birds for eggs but you really don't go beyond that if you kind of prepare for well let me be prepared to have you know my five layers and a run of 25 meat chickens at the same time well with the five layers sure you can get away with you know like a one gallon bucket of water for for them but that ain't sufficient for 25 birds so if you're prepared for that next level up you're prepared for a lot better for anything else that might happen you I mean whether you decide to increase your flock size or somebody calls you and says hey I've got a bunch of birds that I can't keep do you want them I mean that's why we were able to take in that run of turkeys last year was because we already had all the infrastructure for being prepared for more than what we do on a normal basis so that's another side of it so going into uniformity there's a reason that the military you know you just look at the uniforms everybody looks the same you look at you know a combat load for you know a soldier or a marine where they put their mag pouches on their vest they designate that for you you don't have a choice you have to have your mag pouches where they tell you to one of the things that you had to have in a specific location would have been a tourniquet which went in your left cargo pocket on your pants the reason that they do that is if you get hit I'm not going to use my tourniquet on you. I'm going to use your tourniquet on you. But since I know that your tourniquet should be in your left cargo pocket, I know exactly where your tourniquet is. So when you get hit, I can go over, yank your tourniquet out of your left cargo pocket and put it on you. I do the same thing here with kind of the way we run our feed. We've got a shed on the hill up there that has the bulk of our feed storage in it, but that's not all of our feed storage. Adjacent to the gate or door of you know the pig pasture, the goat pasture, the duck coop, all that stuff, there's a couple of trash cans. And a couple of those trash cans, usually the 32 gallon ones, they'll hold three 50 pound feed bags. So I've got extra storage adjacent to where that animal lives. And then I have an active trash can that has just, you know, I'll take the feed out of the storage that's right there and dump it in the active trash can. And that's the active one that they're eating off of. And I have that for each animal. So, I mean, for one thing, if something ever happened to that shed, like, I don't know, it got a bug infestation, because that's never happened before. I don't lose all of my feed. 
plus if I've got somebody that comes in because you know I get in a car wreck or something or I get sick and somebody else has to come in to take care of my animals you go over where the animals are there's these very inconspicuous looking trash cans nowhere close to where you would throw trash away so you go pop it open and look and okay there's feed in here these are in bags let me pop that one open you figure out one and you figure out all of them now you know okay just say you figured that out with the pigs now you go up to where the goats are and lo and behold there's a couple of trash cans there now you're onto the system so i keep everything uniform so that it's easier for people to figure out my systems so <clears throat> I mean, I also have, you know, just for the pigs, they have two different kinds of feed. There's their dry feed and there's fermented corn. But, you know, I've got the same setup for both of those. So that's another thing that just kind of really pans out really well for being uniform, plus it satisfies my OCD. Redundancies redundancies and backup plans kind of fall into the same category and if you've ever been exposed to the military at all you'll know that you know they have backup plans for backup plans like their backup plans have multiple backup plans built within to them you know lots of sayings no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy and stuff like that and a lot of people when they they get into that you know i mean i've got a flashlight right here if you're watching on the video this is a streamlight protac and it takes either a single AA or a single CR123 battery. And if something ever happens to this flashlight, I mean, I've got more batteries for it. I have more of these flashlights, so I can go grab another one. But what if the problem with this flashlight isn't the fact that the battery died? or the light bulb burnout, or the switch broke. What if the problem is this flashlight is actually too bright? Yes, that is a thing. Because if you're trying to look down, say, a pipe, and say you got a clogged pipe or something, and you try to shine a flashlight in there that's way too bright, you're basically just going to blind yourself. You're not going to be able to see anything. So sometimes the problem isn't that the tool that I'm using is somehow broke. It's because the circumstances changed so that I can't use that tool for the job. I had a situation on one of the boats that I was on where I had a nut and bolt that I needed to remove. And I have no idea how they tighten this thing up but the nut was so close to a piece of angle iron I couldn't put a socket on the nut so what I wound up doing was taking a flathead screwdriver and wedging the flathead screwdriver in between the nut and the piece of angle iron which prevented the nut from moving and I was able to take it off so that's a situation where the problem wasn't the fact that my tool broke, it's just the tool wouldn't work. So when we talk about redundancies, it's not just, you know, two is one, one is none. It's having different ways of being able to do something. So, you know, the way that we're about to start rotating the pigs you know the water system that i have for them right now isn't gonna be sufficient for or let me back up it's not that it's not going to be sufficient it's just not going to be functional for what we're about to try to do with rotating these pigs it's a 55 gallon drum you know times eight point whatever it is pounds per gallon that's a lot of weight to be 
trying to lug up the side of a mountain. So I'm not going to be trying to do that. I need to change my tool. So I've got some ideas of what I would, or what other people have done. I have one particular thing that I'd like to try with them, but I haven't gotten around to it. And then in addition to that, specifically with animals, is I have to get my animals trained on the new system too. So that's another consideration you have to take in into account, and especially because, I mean, if you've ever had livestock and you change their feed on them, they don't like it. They'll throw a hissy fit. They will straight up throw a hissy fit. And I've had to sit there and play around to try to get you know animals to eat something that they've never eaten before it's almost the exact same thing it's like it's a, it's a bunch of ground up grains like it's no different than what you were eating but it tastes slightly different to them apparently or it smells different and you gotta jump through hoops to get them to start eating it once they start eating it and they realize oh this is good so anyway just thinking about redundancies and backup plans is not just you know having a second one but also having stuff for when stuff's not going to work the way that you want it to or the way that you usually do it so anyway that was just kind of my thoughts on that as i was thinking about it this morning and i mean i'm dealing with a lot of that type of thing the last couple of weeks just because of the fact that we've gotten some irregular weather at least compared to what I'm accustomed to around here because you know this is I think my third winter here so anyway I hope everybody is having a good week and I hope 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 people as far as I know, they're not really putting a cap on a self-reliance weekend. If you have a chance to make it out for that, you really should. I mean, we had people coming in from, like, New York State for the last one. So, don't try to tell me you can't come because you're too far away. And it's only a two-day event. You don't even have to stay for both days. So, anyway... Um, not really sure what the podcast schedule is going to be for a little while, but I'd expect by, I don't know what day of the week it is. I think it's Wednesday. It might be Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's January. I'm, I'm pretty confident on that part. But hopefully by Monday we'll be back on the regular podcast schedule and then you don't have to listen to me. And no, I am not going to try to sing. So if you want to listen to any of the music, you're going to have to go listen to one of the previous episodes or wait for the next one because I ain't trying to do it. So anyway, guys, stay safe, have fun, enjoy life.